Howdy, we are Kristen Sanchez and Desiree Fawn with Reverb. And today we're gonna to talk about stereo pair recording techniques. That's where we're gonna take two microphones to simultaneously record and create a stereo image for that rich wide sound. So to do that, we're gonna take two microphones in mono and put them left and right to create a sense of realism and of course the stereo width that we would normally not have in a one channel mono recording, at least not that much. These techniques have been developed pretty strategically. So that we're gonna discuss that in this video, this different strategy to prevent phase cancellations or any other issues that you're gonna deal with, dealing with two microphones in different distances. With each stereo pair technique, there'll be a difference in volume level, timing, and frequency balance. Even just a few milliseconds will create a stereo effect. By angling the microphones at different locations of your instrument, you'll create a different balance of frequency. You may have heard of the term coincident when researching all the stereo pair techniques, but what does that mean? Coincident basically means that the microphone capsules have to be as close to each other as possible, sometimes even on top of each other. With that, you're gonna prevent a lot of timing issues, so prevention of phase cancellations and other issues. That's because where they are physically is the same spot, so you're not going to have a different distance from the mic to the source. If you're planning to use mic preamps, make sure that you're using the same mic preamp model for each microphone, and make sure that the gain is the same on both signals. First, we're gonna talk about spaced pair. It's also called AB. This is where two mics are set up some distance apart, either in parallel or angled. They typically use small diaphragm condensers, which are either in omni or cardioid. Point both mics at the instrument, usually about a distance of a foot, and space three feet apart. Anywhere from three to 10 feet apart works. The distance with the mics mean that the sound waves can arrive at different times and therefore are more prone to phase cancellation, especially when mixed down to a more narrow sound stage or to mono. This can be helped with the three to one rule, which says that you can minimize comb filter and other phase issues by making sure that the distance between the two mics is a three to one ratio with the shorter distance being from the mic to the sound source. Compared to the other stereo techniques we were describing, a space pair typically provides the widest and most dramatic stereo image with less room acoustics, but more chances for error since the mics are far apart. This is often used for large sound sources like a grand piano, micing an entire drum kit, full band, and capturing room sound. For an orchestra or choir captured by distance mics, AB is pretty much your main go-to setup. Let's discuss the XY stereo pair. This one may be the most used, easy, and reliable recording technique. Mic directional diaphragms are positioned at the same point in space, so there is no difference in timing. This creates the most narrow stereo image compared to other stereo pair techniques. It's quite the opposite of the AB technique. They're typically angled at 90 degrees and aimed so that the mic on the left captures the right channel while the right captures the left channel. These are typically done with two small diaphragm condensers set in cardioid and the angle can be as big as 135 degrees. This technique will only have differences in frequency balance, which is gonna prevent phase cancellation, so it'll make it more mono-compatible. This technique is best used in closed micing applications in small rooms to provide a clear but not too wide stereo image with the most minimal phase issues. This technique is also great for sound effects, small outdoor applications, and foley. Now we're gonna talk about the bloom line pair. This uses the same positioning as XY, but instead of cardioids, it's gonna use the figure eight pickup. 
This captures the out of phase information or the room sound from behind the sound source and adds a different sense of spaciousness and realism. This was originally created using ribbon microphones in the 1930s. A few types of mics were specifically built for the bloom line technique, including the infamous Royer ribbon mics. Try placing the mics off to one side of the room or towards the back rather than the typical front or center. Common uses are for drum overheads, piano, orchestral ensembles, and full bands. Now let's dive into mid-side techniques. This technique has a middle or center mic pointed directly at the sound source, set in cardioid, and sometimes an omni pickup pattern, while a large diaphragm condenser set in figure eight will pick up the sides. You can then split the side mic signals by sending it over to two mixer channels, pan each hard right and hard left, then phase invert one of those two signals. Mix in the main center mid channel with the stereo side channels to adjust the width. The greater level of the sides compared to the mid, the greater the stereo width. This would be very similar to how our ears pick up sound. This is one of the more complicated pair techniques, but has more mono capability and the least amount of phase issues. It can also give more spread flexibility and width without adding any reverb as you adjust the sides compared to the mid. This technique is where you don't need identical match pair mics. It's unnecessary for only this technique because the stereo information comes from only one mic, which is the figure eight polar pattern mic. Note that the Zoom H2N is the only all-in-one portable recorder with five built-in mics with plenty of techniques to choose from, including the rare mid-side option. And that is for the price conscious. Now we're gonna talk about near coincident pairs. Great examples of that would be ORTF and NOS. The back side of these microphones that are near touching rather than the front side making the name near coincident techniques. This technique combines the principles of AB and XY, but has the width of space pair as well as the strong mono compatibility as XY. Usually small diaphragm condensers are great for this technique in picking up less ambient room sound. This technique can vary slightly in mic distance and angle. For ORTF, cardioid mics are angled outward at 110 degrees and separated by 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches. Whereas the NOS, the mics are 30 centimeters apart or 12 inches and angled at 90 degrees. Like XY coincident pair, the near coincident pairs should be placed closer to the sound source. These techniques are great starting points for piano, small orchestra ensembles, percussion and drum overheads, field recordings, and even some acoustic instruments. Now remember, this is just a starting point with the five techniques we are describing. There's actually a lot more fun stuff to discover. If you're ever confused about how far the microphone should be away from the instrument, just try to visualize the edges of where the microphone would reach, kind of like a photo. Then remember, to keep in mind, you can always check yourself with the mono check button. It's gonna be on your mixer. Uh, you're gonna go back and forth between stereo and mono to really hear the differences and checking out if there's phase cancellations, if the volume sounds thin or low, or hey, the instrument might even disappear completely. So make sure you mono check.
All right, just remember, these techniques were developed by experimenting. So don't be shy. Take your time. Don't rush this. Techniques are super fun to experiment with. And please let us know in the comments some of your favorite techniques and how you use them in your own recordings. Don't forget to have fun.